Pastor Ryan here as we come to Lord's Day 37 of the Heidelberg Catechism. We've been off uh, for a couple of weeks for uh, Christmas, uh, and so we come back. We've been talking about um, the section of the Catechism, which starts at Lord's Day 34, uh, talking about the Ten Commandments. And so um, in the last video from a few weeks ago, we began to unpack uh, the Third Commandment. And uh, so I'm just going to read the Third Commandment to you uh, as it is in the Catechism. Uh, question, uh, the answer for question 92 uh, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. And so last week we began uh, to talk about the third commandment um, and using the Lord's name appropriately and inappropriately. And so we have two questions uh, before us today from Lord's Day 37 to uh, kind of continue talking about the third commandment. The first one is question 101 of the Catechism. Uh, which is, but may we swear an oath by the name of God in a godly manner? And the answer comes to us, yes, when the government demands it of its subjects or when necessity requires it in order to maintain and promote fidelity and truth to God's glory and for our neighbor's good. Such oath-taking is based on God's word and was therefore rightly used by saints in the Old and the New Testament. Uh, here we are talking about... Um, Fidelity and truth for the glory and the honor of God. Um, this is talking about um, doing things like when um, someone who's a politician takes an oath of office and says, uh, as they maybe place their right hand, um, you know, I, I will uphold um, the functions of this of this position, so help me God. Or uh, perhaps when someone is sworn in as a witness in a court of law and says, I, you know, I pledge to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Um, and they do that in order uh, to do that, or, or we do that rather, in order for us um, to, uh, to promise by something greater than ourselves that, that we really do, will do what we uh, said uh, that we will do. Uh, and the, the importance of that is that is that by doing that, uh, we are uh, making a declaration that we are attempting to bring glory to God's name, uh, and we are attempting to do so for the good of our neighbor. Um, and so uh, we, we take these public oaths as government requires or is necessary for us um, in order uh, for us to bear witness actually to our faith in God and to uh, place ourselves under the authority of God uh, and to declare that what we are doing, we're doing so for his purposes, but also for the good of our neighbor. And I think that's important for us to remember, particularly in these days. Uh, I'm filming this. It's January 7th. Yesterday was Epiphany, and not only Epiphany, uh, but a very sad day for our country as, as there was all, all types of turmoil uh, as we face uh, difficult days. And, and um, it's just a tragedy. Um, but one of the things that we as Christians must do always is to align and to know that our allegiance uh, is not with anything on earth, but our allegiance is to God. And so what we do in, in, in what we say publicly uh, is to glorify God and to do good for our neighbors. And that means for all of our neighbors. It means for neighbors who agree with us and neighbors who disagree with us. Uh, it means uh, with our neighbors who are also Christians, and it means for our neighbors who are not Christians, neighbors of other faiths or, or neighbors of no faith at all, that, that we uh, are declaring um, who we are and whose we are when we take oaths in God's name, that we are making a, a really a public declaration, uh, that we are attempting to bring glory to God's name to do good for our neighbor. The second question for us today is question 102. Uh, may we also swear by saints or other creatures? So here we're going to make a big distinction between uh, saying something like, so help me God, as the creator of the universe, of the one who is God, um, and then any other kind of saint or uh, any other creature, anything in the created order. And the answer comes to us, no, a lawful oath is a calling upon God, who alone knows the heart, to bear witness to the truth and to punish me if I swear falsely, no creature is worthy of such honor. Um, one of the, the things I think that, that we have not done a great job of necessarily in the church even all the time is, is to uh, promote and to talk about the divinity of Jesus uh, in particular. But also, uh, we have not done a good job 
as we live in this secularized world and community uh, that really believes predominantly in materialism, that, that the material created order is all that we can see and all that truly exists. And, and we have to be very uh, careful uh, and make distinctions uh, between everything that's in the created order uh, and God himself who exists outside of the created order. And so we don't, we don't swear by, we don't pledge by any group, uh, any faction, any individual. Um, so even though, uh, you know, I come from a Methodist tradition, I, I would never swear by John Wesley. John Wesley is a fallible human being, uh, just like every fallible human being, created in the image of God. And, and he said some really good things that I really agree with theologically. But, but he is not worthy for me or for anyone else to swear by. We, Lutherans don't swear by Luther. Catholics do not swear by the Pope. Um, they are all uh, fallible, uh, and we, we do not do that. We don't swear by uh, national identity. We don't swear by our gender. We don't swear by our age or our ethnicity. We don't swear by any of those things. We, we only make a declaration. And really, in swearing by God or appealing to God, that's what we're doing. We're making an appeal that God would help us. So help me God is generally the phrase that we use, that I've used in this video, that, that we use in those public settings, that we are making an appeal to God, that God would, as he says essentially in, in Psalm 139, that he knows our heart, uh, that he would reveal our heart, that he would purify our heart, that we would be trustworthy and that we would be true in what we witness to. And so in, in this uh, third um, of the commandments to, to not misuse the name of, the, of God uh, also means that we want to rightly use the name of God. Uh, and, and that's really when we pull back from this and we talk about oaths, that's what we're talking about, bringing glory to the name of God in a right way so that we do not dishonor or sully God's name in any way. And I think that's important for us in particular as Christians as, as we live in this diverse world in which there are uh, any number of ideas um, and and actions that really are just pummeling our senses as we uh, have such a difficult time really unwinding and unplugging from the 24-hour social media and news cycle um, in which there is just a, a bombardment upon our senses of ideas and and really one of the things that that comes out is that is that is that there are all of these divisions and all of these small fissures that are made grand. Um, and, and, and in doing that, we can, we can ourselves be divided. And yet we are called to be united in Christ. We are called to be united in who God is. And as the church, we are called not to take earthly sides. Um, as Jesus said even you know, before Pilate, that his kingdom is not of this world. Um, and we as Christians, our citizenship is not in this world. And so it doesn't mean that we don't, um, honor and, and give God thanks for the privileges uh, and the places where he puts us in this world to be able to act uh, and to live. But, but we act and we live not for our own glory or for any human faction, but that glory might be brought to the name of God. And so we need to remember that as we live these days and, and, and with what we say publicly and also what we say privately, uh, that we want to do that. And so we want to go back, uh, as we normally do, as our custom, to go back to the first question of the Catechism, which is, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but I belong body and soul to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for my sins with his precious blood. He has set me free from all the powers of the devil. He also preserves me in such a way that without the will of my Heavenly Father, not a single hair can fall from my head. Indeed, all things must work together for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life. And makes me heartily willing uh, and ready from now on to live for him. Blessings and peace. May you know the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. As you take comfort in these trying days. As you take comfort that you belong to Christ. Amen.